Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in and joining us tonight. Before we start, I would like to say a big thank you to all our Malaysian frontliners for the great work that they are doing. My name is Didi and I'm a professional conference organizer or as we call ourselves, a PCO. My company is Medical Conference Partners and we are hosting this webinar on behalf of Masios. Tonight's forum is on business events. Business events are trade shows, consumer shows, conferences and corporate events. The people who work in this industry includes conference, exhibition and event organizers, convention centers, industry vendors and suppliers. Our ecosystem also includes destination management companies, tour and travel agents and hotel. Over 600 delegates have registered for tonight's event. Oh, I'm sorry, the latest number I got was 748. You are hoteliers, event organizers, conference organizers, exhibition owners, venue operators, suppliers, tour and travel agents, and we also have governed agencies from the tourism and hospitality industry. Welcome everyone. We have joining us tonight as well, students from universities who are taking degrees in hospitality and tourism and are probably wondering about future jobs in our industry. This outbreak has shattered the very essence of our businesses. Businesses that thrives on human interactions and social gatherings. Post COVID-19, what will our industry look like? Will our faces be forever hidden behind masks? Today's webinar will focus on what our industries will look like post COVID-19 and how we can work together to prepare for a new future. A few housekeeping notes before we start. I have prepared some questions to ask our panel of experts for us to pick at their brains and experience. At the same time, we want to hear from you, our audience, and the questions you have for our panel. So we have a ready mobile number at the bottom of our screen where you can WhatsApp your questions to us. We will try to cover as many of those questions tonight as possible. Again, the focus of our webinar is post COVID-19. We will only be able to take questions that are related to topic to that topic due to the factor of time. Any questions about our current MCO and immediate impact will be discussed at other webinars. At the same time, your question might be a popular question, so it may not sound exactly like how you asked it, but it could have been asked by someone else already. So please pay attention. If you do not manage to answer your question during this webinar, we will try to get your questions answered by the panel later. So let's get started. This webinar is brought to you by Masios, together with our guests, Alive, Mata and Ma. Our panel of experts tonight are Dato Vincent Lim, President of Masios, which stands for Malaysian Association of Convention and Exhibition Organizers and Suppliers. Mr. Raja, Mr. Para Raja Gopal, Special Advisor of Alive, Arts, Life, Festivals and Events Association. Mr. Mohammad Akil Mohammad Yusof, Deputy President of Malaysian Association of Tour and Travel Agents. And Mr. Mohammad Halim Marikan, Board Member of Malaysian Association of Hotels. They are key opinion leaders in their respective field and we are honoured to have them with us tonight. Right now, we are all on day 22 of MCO and everyone is acutely aware of the impact on our business due to this pandemic. However, let's hear from each of them about the impact of the outbreak from a business events industry perspective. Dato Vincent, would you like to start first and um, share with us a bit about the impact that this has had on the BE industry in Malaysia? Okay, thank you, Didi. Um, before I start on the question uh, one, uh, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to thank Masios uh, COVID-19 task force. In fact, we, we formed a task force uh, about two, three weeks ago. And also the moderator uh, for tonight's sessions, uh, Ms. Didi Kwa did a wonderful job and her team. And also to um, Jeannie from Marcio Secretariat and her team as well for organizing this uh, very first uh, Marcio's webinar on the post-COVID-19. In fact, we just uh, launched this uh, scene yesterday and surprisingly uh, really exceed our expectation. I just heard from Didi mentioned that we have about 780 uh, audience is joining us for this uh, webinar. 
thank you so much for all your joining us. Now, usually, uh, this is the norm uh, for most of the people having happy hour at this time at 9 p.m. If you back to the normal uh, work days and with your business associate. But during the MPO, uh, we only can meet online. So I call this is like happy uh, webinar hours. It's not happy hour. But I think happily, we are enjoying this journey with all of you together. Okay, let me begin with that question one. Uh, I think clearly Didi did mention about what's B all about. A business event means it's a meeting, incentive, conventions, and exhibitions. We call it MICE. It's an important uh, part driving the Malaysian uh, economy forward. Uh, the event not only create a chain of positive financial impact of the exhibitions and the events uh, organizer, professionals conference organizer, PCO, and venue operators as well as other uh, industry uh, industry partners or the whole ecosystem that include the stand contractor, event services provider, retail, FMB, logistic, hotelier, and inbound uh, tour and exercise. So to share a little bit about what we have uh, recorded for our survey, uh, we have recorded about 1,014 business events were reported in 2018, and this business event contributed to a total of close to 50,000 international attendees for meeting, incentive, conference, and exhibitions. Also a total of one over million of local attendees uh, for the same mice industry. So you can foresee this is a big, uh, B is a big contributor to the national GDP on the tourism industry. So estimated also about 11.3 billion, those are direct or indirect uh, business dealing or sales or transacted were recorded uh, through our survey in year 2018. And we foresee uh, 2019 should be the positive figure. We are in the midst of compiling and we'll, we'll share with everyone uh, perhaps in the one or two months time. Yeah, thank you, Didi. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Para, although business events is not the core business of uh, life members, it is good for us to learn about the impact of the outbreak on your industry. Please share with us. Thank you, Didi. Um, hi, everyone. Hope everyone is safe and sound uh, at home. And um, I'd like to thank Dr. Winston for inviting life to be part of this uh, webinar. And uh, as, as we all know that um, we are trying to learn new technology and new ways to, you know, be relevant at the, this unprecedented uh, times. Um, for for the concert industry or live entertainment scene, uh, we are equally impacted with what is going on, and you know, because the very fact that social distancing is the biggest factor of this uh, disease being spread easily in events so you know we we can't uh, conduct our business as usual uh, and um, let's look at what kind of contribution actually events bring to 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 the to the economy of malaysia or overall any economy around the world uh, if you come back to malaysia the labor force is seems to be the biggest contributing factor because Manufacturing is 37%, agriculture 10% of the labor force, services is 53%. So lots of events contribute to the services, hotels, transport, suppliers, uh, you know, uh, airlines, uh, we, we've got sound and light suppliers, prop designers, you know, and uh, we, we also, hire a lot of human based professionals from uh, sound engineers crew members security so it the gig the entire gig economy relies very heavily on events and having this been taken away and stand still there's going to be a big impact to the to the well-being of all these people in, in, in the industry so thank you yeah Thank you, Mr. Para. Mr. Akil, 
the tour and travel industry is part of our ecosystem. We feel the loss and struggles that you are all going through. Can you quickly share with us the economic size of your industry and how many percent of it is related to leisure tourism and how many percent of it comes from corporate travel and business events? Uh, thank you, Didi. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody stay safe, stay home. Uh, we'll have to go to a difficult time. Anyway, uh, back to the question. We feel, uh, we, we, our bis the travel agent business size is more than, uh, slightly more than 4 billion ringgit a year. And uh, at the same time also, uh, it is leisure, more leisure than more corporate, basically. Uh, due to, uh, we are receiving a lot of uh, tourists to come in, uh, in Malaysia. Uh, when COVID-19 uh, started to, to, to come uh, in uh, November, in December, <clears throat> some of our members doesn't uh, really feel the effect yet but the most uh, dramatic time is actually when china began the lockdown when china began the lockdown then all hell goes through out of the, the, the industry and january february march uh, we practically lose a lot of business when do last time we have about uh, 65 percent of leisure and 35% of corporate. Uh, but now I would say uh, leisure up to probably less than 5% and corporate is also probably less than 5% uh, as uh, we see in the March, uh, the month of March. Okay. Uh, but uh, we, we hope, we hope our members are resilient and uh, we can uh, do it. Uh, we can go through this uh, together, but we cannot go it individually. This is uh, always our message to our members. So it is affecting us a lot. And uh, we, we are, if you see in the market, we are making a lot of noise. Not that we, we are beggars or whatever, but we, we, have, we have to, or else this industry will die. This industry will vanish from the the, the, the the tourism line you know so I think that is what uh, our our view on the industry for business event thank you mr Akil um, thank you very much for sharing for your honest and very sincere sharing with us um, mr Halim your turn how did the cancellations and postponements of business events impact on the hotels? Okay, thank you, Didi. Um, before I start, I'd like to thank um, Dr. Vincent Lim for organizing this webinar. And also, I'd like to welcome all those who are listening in this evening. I hope you are safe at home and uh, practicing and exercising social distancing at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for the hotel industry, basically, we actually did a survey, quick survey, uh, effective from January onwards and right after March. Yeah. Uh, basically, what we have seen, um, also bookings, forward bookings. Yeah. What we've done is we've done a calculation from March up to June. Okay, and that's based on the current MCO and the current global situation. As it stands, occupancy is below 25% and declining fast as well. Uh, also, in terms of revenue, we are looking close or approximately 2.5 billion. 2.5 billion in terms of uh, cancellation losses. Yeah, and that's up to June. Now, we don't foresee the situation to improve uh, soon. And hence, our members at the moment are actually now working out from June onwards up to at least September to calculate what the total loss impact, the impact to the industry. Yeah. Um, 
I would like to take this opportunity also to thank the MAH Secretariat, our CEO, our board members, and all members who have provided us all this information so that we are able to bring this forward to the relevant authorities, the government, uh, to indicate to them that how devastating, devastating this situation is. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Halim. Um, to sum it all up, I was listening to what everybody has mentioned and I'm looking at the losses that has been mentioned and what I'm aware as well for business events. It looks like between the four associations here, our industry has lost a total of 8 billion ringgit just in the last few months. And we are only in the beginning of April. So um, it's a very sobering thought. Um, business events is definitely a significant contributor to the economy of to the economies of all countries around the world. It provides employment to a large number of our citizens. And um, with the loss of jobs, um, it has impacted hugely on many people, a lot of the right yet. So that brings me to my next question. I would like to ask for your personal opinion. How long do you think it would take for our industry to recover from the impact of this outbreak? Tato, would you like to share first? Okay. Uh, thank you, Didi. Uh, I just want to add on, I missed this part, on the uh, BE uh, industry uh, cancellation and the postponement figure. Uh, based on our survey, as of mid of March, we've seen about 713 business events uh, cancellations and 537 reported to be postponed. That also sum up to loss of income at 1.5 billion. This is a big, huge impact to us as of mid March. And based on today, uh, assume the number actually is already increased. We are still compiling this. Now, based on this number, you know, I think the whole BE industry almost is on the shutdown mode. Totally stop. You can go for your happy hour now totally stop and uh, because at the moment you can't do anything uh, public health is more important uh, the country's border are closed uh, no international delegates can fly in or out and no public events or public gathering are allowed during this mco period or even after mco maybe i think they will still observe so we are still very worried when um, uh, the DG did mention, DG of MOH did mention, will consider uh, to ban public events even though after lifted on the MCO. I hope uh, that won't happen or I think we got to do something in order to overcome these situations. And uh, we foresee it will take some time to recover, um, maybe six months to see some recovery sign in Q3, maybe like NQ3 or by Q4. Perhaps the situation will improve, but I think the business will, will still be growing slow. So bear in mind the industry and the whole ecosystem will not be the same like last time. I think it's business unusual. So we have to prepare and change our mindset. Uh, how can we retweet or reinvent uh, our business into the new uh, post COVID uh, nineteen, yeah, I, I think that is part of the thing that we have to be aware of. Yeah, thank you, Didi. Thank you, uh, Mr. Raja. Your turn. Yes, um, I I totally agree with what Dato has said, and I I think I I have kind of like uh, understood this that uh, we 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 have to basically now manage and navigate through this period of uncertainties and uh, i've prepared a, a short slide if uh, alfred you can pick out here yeah. so obviously we need to have a plan on how to mitigate the current situation and uh, either you need to cut your losses or you need to cut your staff staffing or you know you you need to know how to manage your reserves at this point of time and um, you can ex you need to accept help and i think there's a lot of help uh, been given out by the government 
and we, we have to you know also negotiate your OPEX uh, you know your your rentals your staff salaries um, the key thing now is also regular communication with your your core team members how do we you know find ways to still conduct or prepare prepare for the for the future for for the recovery process you this is the time that you can train your staff you can come up with the more improvement plans of your services so you you, you, you are not you're you're constantly engaged you know and uh, you have to keep engaged with the industry speak to your speak to your associations speak to the uh, government uh, bodies that are helping you uh, and like dato uh, vincent said you have to innovate and pivot you know so these are the times where if you can find ways to start a different stream of revenues you need to you know put your put your team together and see how what what are the uh, resources you can use to to start a new a new source of income we we have to work together with a recovery plan to be prepared when you know when when the entire ecosystem improves and lastly i think if we all come together and contribute to each other's uh, survival i think we will get through this so th th this is the first phase of how we can navigate through covid-19 and uh, thank you alfred for the slide um, but the, the the process of getting to the end of the tunnel is another you know it's going to take an un uncertain times because firstly we need to contain the disease and then we need to cope with the disease and and that's the time we need to have certain form of sops in events and in hotels and in venues how we can conduct event during the coping period and you know we can still conduct events safely and you know that, that, that it won't become a cluster of you know spread of for, for the diseases we also need to build the confidence of the market of the audience of the government you know so is is all the c's contain cope build confidence and then you might see some catch at the end of the tunnel to 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 get back your business in in order again you know so uh, i think that's that's my thought on how how we can navigate this together and you know we hopefully that this process will not take too long we we, we are also estimating the next six months you know like maybe we will be able to come back to business in october or, or, or november thank you thank you mr para that was very good and um I really like your slides. Um, I took some notes down when, as you were speaking as well. Mr. Akil, what do you think? Well, I think I will be a little bit more uh, dramatic to some extent. But I would say the, the, the situation will improve or will not back to the normal thing but will improve from 12 months to 24 months from now simply because that you know covid 19 when it hits china it doesn't hit other countries and then slowly it goes to other countries and so it go to malaysia and also now if you can see it goes to uh, italy italy has i mean it's around at the same time now to uk and to us so it will go the cycle and it will eventually come to the whole wide world. Then, in order, because of the different timing of every country uh, facing COVID-19 to the maximum, therefore, every company, countries, if they need smart to back to their uh, own two feet, then the other countries also probably will need the same amount of time or more, right? So, therefore, I would say for, for, for us, we will look at it 12 months to 24 months period. Uh, then uh, the situation may be okay, but it will not go. I, I agree with Dato, I agree with Mr. Para, it will not go to the same. 
even uh, our ad, our special health advisor to the prime minister has said, uh, Tan Sri Dr Jamila has said that we will be totally different after COVID nineteen. Culturally, we will not shake hand. Uh, I don't know how we are going to face uh, Ram uh, Ramadan and also Idul Fitri. So we will not hug. Probably what you see in the internet, people are shaking hands by uh, touching their feet. Maybe that will happen. So, so this is these are the the reality that we have to think now. That uh, and from there we have to devise like what Mr. Paran said. We have to devise the plan, and we cannot work individually. Mata, we don't want to work individually. We want to work with other association so that we can together come up with this uh, situation and be the winner mm. and uh, to do that it's not easy because everybody has their own interests uh, their own uh, uh, priorities but we feel that it can be happy. it can be done inshallah thank you mr akil mr halim can we hear your thoughts um, I think I'm, you know, from Dato Vincent, Para, and Akil, you know, it's obvious it will not be normal. Life will not be normal anymore. Um, you know, it's very hard to put your finger on when exactly COVID-19 will, will be, is, is settled. Um, until and when normal is a certain, it's a moving target. It's a moving target in the sense that people will always be cautious about traveling. People will be very cautious about even going out to a restaurant or to a public space, right? Um, you know, it, it's very hard to, to, you know, to accept the fact that life won't be the same. The way we work won't be the same. The way we mm. travel won't be the same. Hence, I think the topic tonight about mindset shift is uh, hitting it on the nail where everybody now needs to realize, especially for BE or any other business industries, any industries for that matter, um, it will never be normal again. Mm. The next time somebody says, I've got a flu, it's COVID-19. And then we know it's a very naughty virus. It starts to mutate. You know, I think if I'm not mistaken, the US is on strain five or something like that now. Yeah, um, it's mutating. And it's very hard to, to, to accept the fact that the next time we do our work, we'll be from an office, right? I think what a lot of people have learned now is working at home or from home um, might be the way it is now. The way, you know, for Akil to send contracts out or for Vin Dato Vincent to want to try and negotiate uh, a MICE, a conference to come into Malaysia, it's all going to be very, very difficult. And hence, as how uh, Para said that, you know, we need to now look at a plan, find the right plan of how we're going to move forward. Yeah. SARS took us about eight months to recover. Yeah. Um, SARS, we didn't have people just dropping and dying. All right. So it's a very, very serious situation whereby we need to put our mindset right and start changing the way we do business from now. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Halim. Um, some very, very sound advice we heard there um, from that question. It looks like we are here for the long haul. And while some industries may be able to recover fast, for the travel and hospitality industry, definitely it will take a longer time to return. Okay. Our next question will be very interesting. Here I'm asking you to look into your magic crystal balls and tell us what you think the future of our industry will look like post-COVID. What are some of the changes that we think that our respective industry will take um, post-COVID-19? 
Datuk, would you like to start again? Okay, thank you, Didi. Um, I, I foresee, I think after the MCO lifted, assume, assume uh, somewhere May or whatever, uh, I think we don't have to straight away jump to organize our own events uh, because we have to be very cautious and follow what uh, guideline from MOH uh, and also we assume maybe the next, uh, after lifted the next three months that you have to be cautious and take one step at a time to observe the situation. And uh, for the Q3 or Q4, God's feelings, maybe you, I mentioned earlier, hopefully situation a little bit better, then I think uh, we can start to organize the events. Based on my, well, my observation and understanding, there is a lot of events have been postponed to end Q3 or Q3 and Q4. Because whatever postponements from the Q1 and Q2 now all jam up at the Q4. Even though during Christmas, even though during New Year Day, full of events. Uh, for him, this will happen. And things definitely will be different until we found the vaccine. And uh, previously, when in the exhibition industry or any business event, the more is merrier for us. Uh, you love to see uh, your crowded walkway full of industry uh, trade visitors, buyers, a lot of busy, uh, what they call atmospheres in the networking, hustle bustle or the business dealing. We are very happy to see a good turn up in the exhibition, whether it's a trade or consumer. But come to post COVID-19, this will going to change. Maybe less is a must. If the social distancing apply, less is a must. I think we have to prepare ourselves by staying in tune with the listed development, uh, whether imposed by some SOP or guideline by uh, MOH. Uh, that's why uh, Marcio also take the initiative um, to liaise with the government or MOH uh, that we plan to work out a, a SOP or guideline for post-COVID-19 uh, business events a handbook. Uh, that's the purpose why we form this uh, COVID, uh, Marcio's COVID-19 uh, task force. And I share the, uh, my own, own research. I just want to share with uh, the audience. Uh, previously, when you have a nice square meter, you love to see pack of buyers or packs of visitors inside your booth uh, due to the code, uh, what you call uh, social distancing uh, policy. Uh, maybe I think it might allow maximum up to four or five packs of uh, weather visitor and exhibitor per nine square meter in your particular booth. I think we got to prepare that going to change. And maybe I think the walkway previously minimum requirement about 2.5 meter, whether you might want to reconsider the widen your walkway to four or even though five meter. So that I think you still have some spacing. I think this one is based on my research that we get from uh, CDC of USA. They mean from Center of uh, Disease Control. Also, I did my own research. Uh, the China, they have their first uh, exhibitions uh, on post after the post uh, COVID-19 uh, somewhere last week. Uh, it based on what I understand that they didn't make a change on the walkway but they limit the numbers of visitor enter to the hall. Uh, visitor need to like pre-register uh, based on per day, a certain numbers of visitor only allowed in the hall. I think this is a, a different scenario, uh, no longer uh, crowded pack, shoulder touch shoulder. So that kind of scenario. So we have to prepare, uh, but I, I think another thing, whether less is must, maybe less is go. Go means it's a quality one. Then hopefully our business is still can jalan. Yeah, that's my sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Dato Vincent. Mr. Para? Yes, I, I, I think uh, Dato Vincent has, you know, 
came up with some good uh, pointers and advice how we can um, start doing business post covid by you know having a, a health screening protocol for events and managing the the you know the the from actually how how do we you know clean the venues how do we clean the seats how do we organize the seating arrangements uh, the contact point with you know human like ushers i think i think we need to like kind of eliminate it or all using more machines or you know more, more technology and you know i think data collection has become a very important uh, factor now because we need to find everybody who who is now basically you know infected or non infected you know so i i think there's a lot of technology tracking technology uh, that that need to be kind of all put together to to actually present to the authorities and and also the public and and this is the only way we can actually you know mitigate our our business and come back to business so, sooner you know but having said that live live events business is you know is is a especially music and concerts it is a celebration of human 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 talent you know and people are going to be shouting and screaming <laughs> and enjoying themselves so you know it 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 will be quite you know restrictive to have a mask on and you know so that there, there, there's a lot of culture change that we we need to bring about if if you know we don't find the vaccine sooner or, or you know so it it's it's a lot of moving pieces for us but like like what dato said that you know like all the other other industry need to come in first and start moving and then our 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 business especially live events concerts it's it's is down on the on the non essential non in lower than the non essential part of it you know so it, it it will it will take a while for us for concerts to come back in in the in the scale that we usually do but we we can start off doing smaller events 250 packs comedy shows you know so and we can you know organize uh, organize it with all the protocols there you know so th these are some of the ideas we are working together with our members and yeah. partners and all that so hopefully we we be able to convince the authorities that you know we can conduct an event safely thank you thank you mr para mr akil may we hear from you ah oh, thank you didi uh can i have my slide on Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I feel uh, post COVID nineteen is going to uh, portray. You look at the tourism and leisure; we are the last, and we are the biggest potential loser, being away from the uh, turning point, which is oil and gas. And uh, you can see here. Basically, aviation is also close to us, and automotive is also close to us. These are the two uh, segments that also going to help uh, tourism are uh, uh, part of tourism uh, and leisure uh, segment. So, post COVID, what I can say is that we are the biggest loser. And you look at now, which is already showing the medical supplies. Food processing and retail, personal health care, and even IT. I think IT will go very, very far after COVID-19 because of the social distancing between uh, everyone. And uh, uh, I'm also not surprised because this is what happened when uh, my son came back from Europe. We have passenger who wear the special uniform. Special, the the uh, PPE, the the PPE that is been uh, used by the frontliners, they wear that on top on uh, on board of the plane, and also uh, when we talk about social distancing, aviation. How do airline wants to 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 segregate the seat? You can if uh, if uh, Airbus three three thirty you have uh, two. For two, uh, 
uh, seating capacity in the economy class. So now probably you have only one person to sit in the two chairs of every two chairs. So they will carry less. And what does it mean? It means that to travel it will take it will cost you more money. This will happen and uh, this will be a scenario until the confidence, like what Mr. Raj says, so the confidence level increase, then people will go back to the normal thing. That's why I was in the beginning saying that it takes about 12 to 24 months to go back, probably not 100% the, 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 same, the same thing that we have uh, with our uh, pre-COVID-19, COVID but uh, at least we are coming to the nearest that we do. And mind you, uh, tourism was the second uh, income contributor for Malaysia. Right? And what happens after COVID-19? We are the last. We are not the second, we are not the third, but we are the last. So this is the uh, difficult uh, thing for us to swallow, but this what we feel is going to happen and that's why Mata we want the government to realize this and to give their best support to us we are the we are the industry that is going to be affected most hotels mm -hmm. travel aid uh, uh, convention centers and so on and so forth thank you thank you mr akil Mr. Halim. Okay. Um, after listening to the three panels, you know, um, yes, it is going to be very, very tough. Yeah, it's going to be very tough, but not totally impossible. I think we need to reach out now to all partners. Yeah, in this case, for BE. You know, business events, um, as how Mr. Akil says, the impact on travelers is going to take 12 to 24 months. Uh, how do we manage or how do we do a huge conference or exhibition and we have to control the number of people entering the venue? Normally, exhibitions might be a week. Do we extend it? to 10 days in order to meet up with the demand of those people who wants to visit. Uh, we as hoteliers and also Mr. Akil, even Dato Vincent, you know, we go to trade shows which used to be three to four days, which are now cut down to two days. And it's all because of costs. The increase in costs. When there's an increase in costs, there's a reduction in participants, right? So from the hotel standpoint, you know, the first first point that we got to look at is the post-COVID would be staffing. To date, there has been uh, three categories of staffing for the industry that has taken place. One is those who are still working, those that are on, uh, what do you call it, partial, partial pay, and those who are on unpaid or who are away on leave. Yes, we have gotten government support to cover the payroll costs, which in any industry is the highest cost, right? So at the end of the day, it's about the perception of large gathering, the perception of large number of people traveling, which will impact the industry, the hotel industry or any industry in, in, in BE. Yeah. So for the hoteliers i believe we have to realign our segments we have to realign and review our channel of how the business are coming in we have to realign the geographical business where are they coming from when we had sars we were looking at domestic for at least six months and then we opened up to regional travel two months after and forth so forth before we started looking at long haul 
and a very long haul, you know, um, there are a lot of skeptical tra travelers who say that, is it safe to come to Malaysia? Is it safe to come to Southeast Asia? So Tourism Malaysia and uh, Ministry of Tourism has come forward and said that there are some strategies that have put in place, uh, mainly starting again with domestic market, you know. So this may help the hoteliers, this may help the rooms being filled up, this may help the restaurants being occupied with uh, the seats being occupied. Um, but in terms of BE, business events, that's going to be a bit uh, difficult. Yeah. Um, again, as I said, it's not totally impossible. It you know the the day will come back where social gathering is gonna be required. There will be a day where we're gonna have to to get together and um, start doing business again, business relations, partnerships. Yeah, but at the meantime, I think the mindset shift that has to take place is that uh, for the industry to really, really look again at from inside from within the business and looking out survival is about looking at what's happening inside your own business how you are using what is available technology manpower resources uh, contacts networking right and then um, moving into that direction i think when we sum all the three panels uh, points put together as what I'm also saying, you know, I think this is a mindset, mindset shift that we have to be to agree upon that this is the situation it's going to be for now, for the next eight to 12 months. So my advice and the way I look at things is realign your segments, realign your channels of business, realign the type of business that you're going to come with or you're going to get and then look from within, looking out to improve your business. Yeah, thank you, Didi. Thank you to all four panels, um, panel speakers. It sounds like we actually have a lot of work to do. In fact, um, you know, it's not really a break for our industry. During the MCO time, I'm sure many of us are actually having a lot of sleepless nights thinking about our business how to pivot it and how to reform the businesses. So all the advice that you shared there, um, very useful. And I hope that a lot of our viewers tonight will take a lot of notes and have something to work with. We'll come to the next question. Um, and we have actually been receiving a whole lot of questions that are coming in. Um, the questions are coming in nonstop. It's good. Um, where It's good to know that these questions are coming in. And actually for our viewers, a lot of the questions you're asking us, we will be covering as we go along. So um, please be patient. Your question or the topic that you're asking about will come up. Okay. So um, we are taking, we are answering questions from the audience in between the questions that um, we, I'm repeating right now. Okay. Um, someone asked, how do we come together as an industry to to overcome this challenging period? Um, perhaps for this question, we would like to ask Mr. Halim first. And then uh, followed by Mr. Akil, then Mr. Para, and finally Dato Binson. Well, um, thank you, Didi. You know, I think the first step is we cannot be greedy. Let's be honest to ourselves that uh, in in the tourism industry, in the hospitality industry, in the business events industry, we need each other. We need to sit down together and come to a point and agree to say that it's everybody's business. The pie is there and we need to share this pie equally. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, when we talk about BE businesses where there's mice involved, uh, Dr. Vincent's uh, team or even yourself, DD, you know, your company would go and meet up with travel agent, you go and meet up with, uh, you know, Paras team to get the entertainers, you'll talk to us hoteliers, you know, uh, you'll talk to the airlines to try and bring in three, four, five thousand people to move them into a city like Kuala Lumpur or Malaysia, you know, even for Kuching or Sabah, everywhere there's a convention center and there's still convention centers being built in Malaysia, right? 
So we need to share that pie. We need to be able to 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 compromise with uh, with you know with the, the stakeholders on. You cannot have everything. We need to have some. You need to have some. Let's split this up and let's be fair to that to everybody. It needs to be a fair playing game, uh, a fair playing field whereby you are able to now work together. Sit down and say, "This is what I need." Dato Vincent or somebody from the mice, or uh, what do you call it, the travel agent, the wholesalers. You know, Akil. They might go and they try to bid for for a conference to come to Malaysia, and that's a lot of money that has to be laid out before. And the conference may only show, you know, coming to Malaysia maybe three to four years after. But the capital needs to come out now in order for you to bid for that huge conference, right? So we need to be fair and we need to go up, go, you know, go to, to the PCOs or the DMCs and say that, okay, I'm willing to give so many room and this is the specific rates I can offer, right? And they should be able to know that I can accommodate 4,000 people, right? They should be able to know that Mata, through the, the, land, the ground handling, is able to provide me the coaches, Sorry, I'll repeat that, you know. Mata may need to, to come up with the coaches. So, you know, that that pie needs to be shared and we need to work together towards this one common goal. It's not about <coughs> Marcios or Alive or Mata or Ma. It's about Malaysia being a destination. Mm. We lose out a lot to Singapore, to Thailand, right? To Jakarta now and even to Manila. We, we lose out because we don't make Malaysia as a destination first. Once you achieve Malaysia as a destination and people know that, hey, there are lots of things to do in Malaysia. Logistically, they are fine. Infrastructurally, they are fine. Right? Technology, they are fine. Accommodation, we've got all level of accommodation, three, four, five. Right? They have choices. So moving forward, this is what we need to do. Yeah, working together jointly, one common goal, making Malaysia a destination first before we move into talking about your business, my business. Yeah, hope that answers the question. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's really good, and I'm a lot of hope in there in that message as well, Mr. Akil. Yes. Thank you, Dee. Uh, I, I totally agree with uh, Mr. Halim. Uh, in order for us to bring in uh, the tourists back, that we need to work together. I remember those days when uh, Tan Sri Abdul Kadir, Sheikh Abdul Kadir, he was the tourism minister. Uh, we opened up India market. We were losing big time with, with Singapore during that time. Singapore was having about 27 flights a week. We are only having about nine flights a week. So Singapore has three times flights a week. So what we did is that we went there, we worked hard, we go to uh, seven cities in 10 days. Hard marketing, hard uh, canvassing and hard trying to gain the, 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 the momentum back to our country. But uh there are another factor that we have to look at which is covid 19 the, the the social distancing is quite uh quite uh uh what quite dominant uh the the fact you see i would say probably people will come there will not be staying two person in a room or three person in a room in order to cut costs probably everybody will stay single okay so that is one of the things that is going to increase the cost. The other thing that I mentioned just now is the flight. Mm. Well, last time, airlines are enjoying with 80% load factor, 90% load factor during peak period. But during post COVID 19, it will be probably 50% or 40%. So they have to find out a way how to reduce further their cost at the same time not to increase too much or else you will put people off 
Okay. The other thing that I would say is that the government, the private sector have to be at the same thing. We have to work together. Okay. This can be done in terms of domestic tourism. How can we do that? A lot of our companies have contributed to HRDF. Right? When HRDF, they have the funds. So HRDF funds is to do training and make this training mandatory only in Malaysia for the next one year. Do not allow anybody to do the training overseas. Use all the local content, the local expertise, the local teachers or the local uh, person who are knowledgeable. Use them and then use the travel agent, use the local the hotel, three, four or five star hotel, use the conference hall. Everything we do it domestically. If you are afraid to travel, then if you are staying in KL, go by land. Right? That way, I think it will help the industry to, 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 to survive, to survive in the beginning before we can go further away to attract the international uh, the international event to come in. I mean, we would like to see the international event to come in immediately after Malaysia is certified COVID-19 free. Right? But the main thing is that whether the social distancing is still a mandatory during that time. It's very, very difficult to imagine uh, this kind of thing. So I, I feel in order to what what Mata feel is that basically we have we echo what Mr. Khaled from Ma saying that we have to work together as a team, and government also have to be our team. Government cannot see us as the the enemy or the people who are making a lot of problem to them. No, no, no. Please, this is a crisis. We have to sit down together and engage more, more, and make sure that we come out as a winner and that is easy said than done believe me uh, we have we have been to sars uh, we have been to the japanese uh, what you call it japanese uh, the one that is uh, all these diseases we have been to we have go through but covid 19 is totally different totally different they have so much thing that we have to consider Therefore, we have put our ego in the pocket, put it in the pocket, and meet up with everybody and try to make things happen. Things happen for the travel agent, things happen for the hoteliers, things happen for the uh, concert, things happen for the exhibition hall, a venue, right? And who is going to be the, uh, the people who is going to gain this? Is the government through sales tax, through income tax, through this one. So government has to think that way. Government has to understand their role. Because 30%, or sorry, 25% of our business, if we make money, belongs to them in terms of taxes. So they must make sure that we survive. We cannot just put, oh, cannot, sorry. But I agree, there will be sure we have to accept casualty. And who is the casual, who is going to be the casualty? That I cannot say. I leave it to God to do it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Akil. That was a very strong and compelling proposition that you put out there. And I hope that um, our government is listening as well, because as you rightly pointed out, they are part of the team. Mr. Para, we'd like to hear from you next. Yes, I, I, I think um, we are already working together as a team. I mean, this webinar is already a, you know, a statement that we are working together. The industry has come together as the, the frontline medical uh, people are trying to save lives. We are here trying to save. We are the frontliners trying to save our industry, you know, so I, I think if there's from the stories that Akhil and uh, Halim was telling us, I think there's some incredible stories and we are very resilient throughout all the all the chapters of all the diseases that we that we've gone through. 
and I and I and I believe that if there's we we have the personalities in the industry, we have the incredible uh, you know characters like Dato Vincent and all that. I I don't see we failing to come back from this. You know, I think we like like what what we have to do now is work together and with one common goal without the the now the priority like what Jahalim said is Malaysia. You know, if we put that common goal together and work together towards it, we all will come out of this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Farah. Tato. Thank you, um, Didi. I absolutely agree with the three panels, especially J. Halim talking about uh, Malaysia is the preferred uh, being the destination. I think it's a good thing. I think we have to look forward like what Mr. Farah mentioned. Hopefully, the Minister Lamotang is, is watching us and hear something from the industry players. Uh, it's also good if there is a chance, perhaps maybe we can suggest to the Motang or the Minister. I, I don't know whether they already formed. It's just to have a recovery task force uh, committee that insists on the industry uh, representative to advise and work together with the Ministry. How can we... Um, how can we overcome this COVID-19 as short as possible? I think if you're talking about one year, 12 months or 24 months, that will be a big damage to the economy. So a lot of industry players are not able to sustain for so long. Because for the first two months, we already hear a lot of news from the SME, even though through our member survey, uh, it's a very scary report that some, even though mentioned, um, between like um, between four months, I think we can see 50, 60 percent of the company got to wind up. I think that will be a very scary, and we try to uh, support each other uh, because all of us is in the same boat. So we have to support each other because when there's an event or when there is a uh, what do you call a business event back to normal. We still knew all these industry players of our partner to work together again. Mm. And then we know, I think we hear from everyone. Uh, I think we know, I think we forget about international event in the midterms. Uh, long term, I think one year, I hope maybe we'll start to coming back. So I wish um, more local homegrown events can be organized uh, so that um, at least there is a like, like Mata, I think the Chuti Chuti Malaysia. So on the business event, I think we still can focus on the domestic market, uh, local homegrown event. Uh, it is to start to nurture the homegrown event from small. I think it will be grow into the uh, regional and one day it become an international event. Uh, I know, I think uh, my set people is also uh, with us today. Uh, I, I hope, I think they can know the, how important of the uh, what they call uh, promoting or nurture the homegrown event for the benefit of the nations. So I think before we end, uh, I also wish uh, on behalf of all the organizers, whether it's a PCO or, or PEO, exhibition organizer, we wish or I hope the venue operator can reload and reconsider uh, the whole rental package could be more flexible during the post-COVID uh, 19 period assumed for this year or for 2021 so that there is a flexible and your contribution you play a role i think forever people will remember because you help the industry player the small and the medium events organizer pco exhibition organizer to sustain their business let their small event continue to kickstart to run in fact, I think we don't think about making money for this year. If we can sustain for this year, I think that is already a plus point. So from there, before I end, I watch maybe all industry players will agree with me that we have to work together, not only among the Marcio's, um members, we wish I think is a good start for today, all the four captain uh, of the industry that we are here for this webinar, I think it's a good sign uh, in the future that we can work even uh, closer and create a better synergy among our industry. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dato. 
Um, thank you everyone for that session. It looks like, um, as you all say, we for us to recover, we start first by looking inwards, um, by working together, by building up the foundation of our industry again from within, and then we'll be strong to attract the international guests and international tourists once more. Um, moving on, we've already reached 10 o'clock, which is our one hour, but I think we have so many questions coming in still. So perhaps with everyone's permission, we can go on for another half an hour. Is that no okay? Problem. Okay. All right, no thank problem. you. Ready, okay. Thank you. Nothing so, to um, <laughs> nothing to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, quite a number of the questions coming in are about technology. So um, how is our industry able to use technology to adapt? Um, gentlemen, I came across this post. Alfred, would you mind to share it? So this is very <laughs> apt. Who led the transformation of your company, digital transformation of your company? Okay, um, Alfred, can we go back to our screen, please? Thank you. So um, perhaps I'll ask, would anyone like to tackle this question first? Okay, I start first. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think uh, technology at the moment, I think, this play a very important role for everyone. Uh, you just imagine if we do not have this webinar, we don't have a Zoom meeting, if during the MCO period, we really, really, we have nothing to do. Right? I, I think that is proven uh, technology will help. Uh, to see how we, our business will still continue. Uh, and a lot of people are still talking in like industry, all talking about uh, whether the virtual exhibitions, whether it's the online exhibition, and how to digitize uh, your uh, business event so that you still stay uh, active. And because of the younger generation earlier that we taught, because of their more IT savvy, but I think uh, because of the Corona, because of the COVID-19, um, this become a very important tool for us to reinvent our business event. Uh, in short, I think to reinvent into this uh, business tool is a must for me, I think, whether it's a mid-term or for long-term into the business, because I remember I attended one um, CEO summit uh, in Shanghai in 2018, was invited as a panelist. Uh, you remember someone is presenting, is talking about the exhibition 2.0. Seems I think because of this uh, COVID-19, it will help the industry to achieve the uh, exhibition 2.0 faster. I, I think we foresee whether that is uh, fortunate or unfortunately, but I think is unavoidable, it's, it's already must. Uh, like, I just wanted to share, like, um, human body you have, uh, if not mistaken, I think you got 200, assume it's 250 pieces of bone. With the modern technology, there is 251 pieces of bones. Another piece is whether it's your laptop or it's your mobile phone. It's always attached with you. So, with that, thank you very much. Thank you, Dato. Yeah. Mr. Para, would you like to go next? Yeah, yeah. I I think not everything negative came out of COVID. I think COVID has, you know, got us to think out of the box, got us out of the comfort zone, uh, got us together to think a solution where we are we have to use technology at this point of time. So, you know, technology is how we're going to reshape and uh, re re-innovate our, our business uh, for the live events. We've, we've, we've been doing a lot of streaming concerts already before, but now it, it, it's going to look like it's, it's going, people are going to expand it and, and you know, find ways to monetize it as well. And so, you know, it, it's, uh, it's part of and parcel of how we have to, you know, adapt and, you know, also find ways to improve our business through technology. So, you know, we, we all as a company need to, uh, you know, have, have, you know, a, a, a team or, you know, we, or, or the leaders of the, of your, of your business need to lead this quite seriously, 
not only during a crisis but throughout your business so we'll be ready for the next crisis you know so i, I think mm -hmm. that's that's the key taking from from what i i i, I can share with the, with the viewers and, and the panel thank you thank you thank you miss para mr akil well uh for mata we have we are we are doing something about technology and i think uh covid 19 will will make us to accelerate our uh, intention to uh, to have our own platform for our members. Uh, actually, we have just launched it last year, and uh, I feel that uh, we are we did not get a lot of good support. But out of this COVID nineteen, I'm sure now, uh, Ma Maho, uh, Makios, Ali alive and all other uh, association or industry uh, which is relevant to tourism we definitely want to work together to make sure that uh, our platform which is we build it for our members it can work it can help to bring back the business that we lost during COVID-19 uh, and technology is also the answer uh, to the future of the business in tourism and also probably in other industry yeah so we have to embrace uh, even though i am not really well versed in technology but uh, what mr para said to me this morning i have to embrace it so whether you like it or not whether you are 20 years old company owner of a 20 years company or 30 years old company or five years old company or even one years old company technology is the answer in travel industry and technology does really works and it does really bring the business so the fastest way to earn your dollar and cent is also through technology so what to do we have to embrace we have to what uh uh, orang tua tua cakap uh, tidur makan dengan teknologi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's a new hashtag for me to learn. <laughs> tidur <laughs> makan dengan teknologi. That's a good one. Thank you, Mr. Akil. Uh, Mr. Halim, we would like to hear from you. Okay, I believe I have a slide for this one with regards to technology. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, um, technology and the hospitality industry, you know, it's, it's not something new. We've been embarking and using technology uh, for our business for a long time now, actually. Yeah. Um, in fact, you know, we, we sometimes forget that Y2K was 20 years ago, you know, and all that commotion with regards mm -hmm. to Y2K, and that's already technology being used, yeah. So, you know, we will continue. We will continue to use technology and we will all continue to enhance our operations using technology to make it easier for our customers, for our guests. Yeah. However, in the hotel industry, we cannot compromise the personalized service. It's a perceived expectation by our customers when they come to a hotel to receive such personalized service, right? I mean, now we talk about, you know, checking in using your your credit card and using kiosks and all that, yeah? So those are just enhancement, but you still need the people behind it. And as we already spoke earlier about manpower, Manpower being the most expensive uh, component or most you know expenditure for operation, we need to maintain the staff. We need to maintain and but however we need to train them to be more multitasking. We need to train them to be able to use a lot of the technology to help with their uh, daily task, right? And uh, definitely e-commerce platforms and social media. That is definitely going to be used even a lot more now if it's not already being used a lot. Yeah, but the interesting part about technology will be the technology for marketing. 
I think we'll be using a lot more now since we are realigning our market, our our segments, realigning our channels and your geographical origin of business. The technology for marketing will come come in very largely. Yeah. And uh, lastly, technology for culinary and FMB team and the rooms operation. Um, you know, we're going to have to start thinking about investing. Uh, I do understand some companies do provide higher purchase uh, arrangements for equipment in the kitchen to be a little bit more tech, uh, technical or technology driven. Right? This will actually uh, again enhance the production of food or culinary, but at the same time, it allows the staff to be a little bit more mass multitasking. Yeah. Um, I used to joke with my son to say that nowadays hotel school, you know, you need to learn to push a button, right? As opposed to what I did 30 odd years ago where everything was manual, right? But at the end of the day, that's the real life now. That's the real thing now. So technology, this is what the direction we need to go. Yeah. And as Dato said, the webinar, here we are, right? Uh, video conferencing. You know, but the, the important thing to realize now, moving forward and changing our mindset is um, conferences will be smaller for the time being. Um, convention centers will probably, you know, have difficulties trying to fill up all their 10,000, 20,000 square feet of, you know, square meter halls. Um, I think this is where when I say earlier about working together is basically talking about PCOs and, uh, and and PMCs and, and you know PCOs and DMCs to to now come back to hotels because we do have ballrooms we do have banquet halls to cater to the smaller uh, what do you call it meetings smaller conferences you know so that's one of the meaning when I say work together Right. It's nice to be in the convention centers, but at the same time, we do have facilities as well. However, from the standpoint of a hotelier, I think a lot of our facilities need to upgrade. And their upgrading needs to come into the technology part of things, the state of the art technology equipments nowadays. Without that, even the hoteliers will have a lot of difficulties matching up to the demands of the participants, demands of organizers. So again, changing the mindset, this is something that hoteliers need to bring themselves forward and start looking at state-of-the-art uh, equipments to cater to business events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's my take on it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Halim. I think um, that was a really good... Um, you, know, you, you, came, you gave some really, really good points. Um, and at the end of the day, um, technology will be a key driver across all industries. We just need to adapt and we need to adopt technology. If we do not, then we'll be left behind. Another very popular topic that everyone has been asking a lot of questions on is safety measures. What type of safety measures um, do you see that your members will put into place to minimize the spread of COVID-19, even though we have a vaccine, it may be 12 months to 18 months before we will get the vaccine here, and um, to build confidence in returning customers such as tourists, corporate clients, and show delegates. Uh, so what type of safety measures? That's what they would like to know. Um, Dr. Vincent, do you want to start first? Okay, okay. Thank you, Didi. Um, or as a professional uh, exhibition organizer, I think we have to take, put our visitors or exhibitors or our staff, their help is the first priority that for us to take. Uh, whether you like it or not like it, I think it's a must for the post COVID-19 business event. And I foresee um, or, uh, post COVID-19 after uh, all these uh, venue operators and show organizers, I think we have to look into the hygiene facilities. I think that is unavoidable that we have to go. Example, that you need to have your face mask, 
hand sanitizer, temperature screening, uh, screening and sanitizing tunnel. This is one of our uh, members have been sharing with us that they have been invented into using the uh, shell scheme system. And then they also spraying out the like a mist fan that you for walk through the tunnel so that you can screen your body. Same thing, I think also the social distancing policy have to apply. So reduce crowding uh, and also practice social distancing as what the government enforce at one meter away and uh, assume uh, per human. I think this is only my internal uh, research together with my team. Uh, per human assume is about four square meter left and right front and back that you require four square meter per visitors. Uh, if you are taking, let's say, uh, 10,000 square meter, 10,000 square meter means like assume hall one to hall five of Kuala Lumpur Convention Center. So between the 10,000 square meter, that means maximum you might want only allow 2,500 visitors enter <clears throat> to the hall at one time. This is just only my own assumptions. And no more shake hand. You just imagine when you're doing business, you no more, no more handshake, no high five when they sign the contract. And all this, I think we've got to slowly adapt into this guys of new business uh, practice. Uh, even though like registration, those were the day I think you like to see people are queuing at your registration counter because of the social distancing policy. I think you have to be innovative. I think try to avoid that kind of uh, queuing. Even though it's under water, I think you still need to put a box or guide the, the distance. And uh, a lot of things, a lot of changes are happening of after or post uh, COVID-19. So we just have to uh, prepare ourselves, mindset change. Uh, just want to share with you all, I think Jakarta yesterday just announced the uh, Gojek. I think everyone know Gojek is like a motor by taxi uh, because of the COVID-19. The Gojek no services no longer allowed to carry passengers. Now, Gojek become like another only food delivery service allowed. So you can imagine, I think a lot of things will be changed uh, into the exhibitions or into the conference. So I think we put our stakeholder, delegates, exhibitor, visitor of their health is a number one criteria. I think we can do something for that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vincent. Mr. Para? I think, yeah, I think Dr. Vincent covered most of the key uh, screening, health screening uh, at, at the venues. And, you know, the I, I I think usually we only, it was security screening before for events. So now there's another layer of, which is health screening. You know, there, there, there also talks about uh, actually testing people for COVID-19 before they enter the venue. So you know these are the these are the measures that that people are talking about around, and uh, we on on our side we we are already sending out surveys to our our ticket buyers and our fans who usually come for concerts and all that is how do they see themselves going to events in the next six months what 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 kind of behavioral changes that they can adapt to you know so we, we we are coming back to we are putting back these questions to to the public so we will understand them better so we will be better prepared when we are designing the sops and the and, and how how we can we, we because this the only thing that we can fight this with is human behavior now social distancing cleanliness you know, and you know, this is the only only weapons we have now to fight this disease, because although there are there are trial medications to to cure people, uh, I mean to, to not cure is is to basically you know mitigate their their health currently, but uh, you know we we have to really look into the behavior of our attendees, our you know employees, the venue employees, you know, so how. I think it's, it, that is what is going to give the, give the confidence for people to come back to events. 
you know. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think this, these processes are very important to be to be implemented and 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 shown to be implemented very very seriously. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Akil. Well, uh, <clears throat> health and safety is the most uh, important thing uh, for human nowadays, especially after COVID nineteen. So you just imagine, I want to take, uh, I just thinking of taking you all through uh, the process uh, of we bringing in the, uh, the, the exhibitor or the uh, visitor of the exhibitor to a hotel. Okay, so they will be uh, temperature screening at the airport. And then before they board the bus, our driver will also do <laughs> We have to do the uh, the, the temperature uh, screening as well. At the same time, also the guests will also want to know whether the driver uh, uh, is okay or not. Then the guests will also do the temperature to the <laughs> to the to the driver. I mean, we, we can we can we can see this is going to be uh, very funny sometimes uh, to some extent. But uh, but this is the measure that we need to do uh, to some extent. You know, I I, I read something that uh, in Italy, the doctor find out that why the cases are still very, uh, growing up is because they wear shoes, the, the buyers stay in their shoes, they wear shoes in their houses. So they did not clean Make up the, the shoes, clean up the, the body, the, 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 the shirt they wear, the trousers, but the shoe they left it. They did not do it properly. <clears throat> so that's why the virus spread uh, easily in, in, in Italy. So what does it mean? It means that it really value the safety and the health of our visitor and exhibitors. We have to do way, way beyond our imagination that what we are doing now. We have to do something like what I say, the driver of the bus also you need to do. And then social distancing in the bus, probably four seat one person. If a bus with 40, 40 seats, you can only carry 10 people. So what does it mean? It means more treats have to be done to be do to go to the exhibition uh, center. And what will, do, will happen? More costs will happen. More costs will incur to yes. do this. So this is the uh, small things that I see uh, that the industry uh, has to understand as a whole. That's why, in order for us to be a team player, yes, Dato, you are right. You will tell your Makios uh, uh, members that try to reduce the price so that we can attract them. The same goes with uh, Alif, uh, Mr. Para, your artists, probably they cannot earn as much as what they do because all these savings actually will come and throw into the expenditure that they will spend on safety, on health screening, and all the other exactly. things that required after COVID-19. So yeah. this, I don't know how much it's going to be, but mm. something very interesting for us to discover. And yeah. I think our Ministry of Health is looking into it, is learning how to do this. And I think sooner or later, we will know what we need to do and how we want to do it. And Mind you, probably if we were to do this, we may be the example country in the whole world. Then that will increase the confidence of the visitor, international especially, that they know that they can do the conferencing, the exhibition in Malaysia because we are very, very detailed in our health screening, in the safety of the exhibitor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Akil. Mr. Halim, we'd like to hear your wise words. <laughs> uh, I do have a slide for this, uh, Didi. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. yep. um, even uh, during the pandemic, pre-pandemic situation, our hotels uh, have started with stringent sanitization practices for both staff, guests, and also to the suppliers and vendors. Yeah, I think what we have to realize now is that you know um, how 
previously we were doing businesses when the suppliers deliver the items to the loading bay, the receiving guy receives it, you know, and then he takes it to the storeroom or sends it to the department directly. As how we are doing with our own groceries nowadays at home, we will have to sanitize these items. We will have to leave it outside for a period of time in order for the virus which may be coming into contact with these items to, to disappear. And only then we will be delivering these items to the store or to the departments. So that by itself, you know, has already changed the way we are normally doing things. Yeah. Uh, we talk about sanitization of the staff um, and gas, but I think as we know, there are a lot of ways how the virus can come in contact with us. As uh, Mr. Akil say, you know, in Italy, they realized it was actually the shoes that they were wearing indoors. So these are areas that the hotels will have to start practicing as well. Apart from the fact of daily sanitization of rooms, public areas, yeah, those are all the things that is currently being done. There will be an increase in this area of care for our guests, our staff, yeah. Um, but one very major and important thing that as the association has discussed and currently we are looking into this uh, in depth is actually reviewing our SOPs and policies to address matters that concern safety and security. Uh, we are encouraging hotels which has got an OSHA committee or a hygiene department to review all their current SOPs and policies and start implementing and enforcing it. Yeah, It's about education at the end of the day. Um, we need to instill proper hygiene and sanitization exercises with our staff, even with our guests. Um, many hotels have foreign workers. In fact, not only our industry, many other industries have foreign workers. It could be the security guards and all that. Education for these people is very, very important about hygiene, about how they, they use to just, you know, uh, speed on the floor or whatsoever. Yeah? Um, I won't go into details with that. But all these are potential issues that can cause the virus to spread. Right? At the same time, frequent monitoring of staff who may show signs of illness to have them immediately checked up and you know if quarantine is required or if they need to go home. A lot of staff in the past or even currently you know, if they have a slight fever, if they have flu, they still come to work. I think, again, the education needs to be implied, applied here whereby they need to understand that if you are not well, you need to go to the doctor. Yeah, uh, that also applies to the management. They need to also understand that your staff may be having a slight flu they need to be going to the doctor and the doctor may give them an MC. So again, multitasking comes into play whereby you should be able to operate should somebody needs to go or be relieved for a medical situation. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, you know, when we look at daily sanitization of rooms and public areas, restaurants, um, as I mentioned earlier, currently gloves, chef's hat, you know, uh, are the requirements. But nowadays, I think we're going to have to include the mask for all culinary workers in order for them to be able to be, you know, to, to make sure that hygiene and, and the safety of food handling is done. Um, training companies who are conducting food handling courses need to also review their SOPs or the training materials that they're providing to make sure that they cover this sort of topic, especially about sanitization and hygiene. Yeah. So I think this is the way moving forward, changing the, shifting the mindset of employees. If employees are able to conduct this, then they should also be able to share this with customers. And that is where the perceived 
uh, confidence will come back in if we are all able to do this right so i think this is something that changing the mind or um, shifting the mind is important with regards to post covid thank you thank you thank you Ms. Salim. um we have a question here uh, maybe dato you might want to take this question um, it's by one of our guest viewers, uh, Francis. Um, you have touched on collaboration, but have you guys worked on a platform for us to come together? Independent players like us won't have the resources to do so. Uh, I think the associations is play a important role to connect the industry players together. And uh, especially during the crisis, uh, sometimes like individual voice is difficult to hear by relevant uh, ministry or agency. Uh, if you really know, I think please join us, whether it's a members of the Marcios or uh, to understand us more or let us know you more and see how actually we can work together. Uh, we are looking forward uh, how to connect the industry player together so that we can have more uh, louder voice. Uh, at the same time also, we also want to work closely with the relevant B industry associations in Malaysia. At the same time also, uh, regionally and internationally, Marcios also play a very proactive role to affiliate with the Africa, uh, is a Asia Federations of uh, Exhibitions and Convention Associations. The same goes to the UFI, ECA and all these international bodies so that we're able to learn and to share so that we learn from each other. So please talk to us and or talk to Jeannie. Uh, we always can keep in touch again. Thank you. Thank you, Dato. Jeannie, um, uh -huh. may I add to this point um, yeah. on this yes, question? Mm -hmm. The floor uh, is yours. It comes back to technology, right, Dato? You know, I mean... Um, yes. I know there are some countries that actually do it and it's almost like a bidding process whereby if the PCOs or DMCs requires X number of rooms, X, X thought of services required to work from travel agent, you know, it's, it's a platform whereby one can go in and um, Masios, for instance, will say, okay, we are bidding for a, you know, exhibition or something three down three years down the road. This is what require we require. And as Masios members, we are able to then go onto the platform and actually put in our biddings, right? And I think this is again what we say moving forward and talking about technology. Um, suppliers for raw materials, we are using technology. I'm looking for for 20 kilos of tomahawk beef. Mm. I go into the you know I go into the system and only some suppliers do carry this item. Not every supplier carry this item. So whoever has it puts in a bid, and I'll go to the best bidder. Similar, I think this is where technology will help when it comes to talking about connecting everybody together. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you, Mr. Halim. That's a very good point um, coming in from a different perspective, but um, very relevant today in today's discussion as well. Thank you. So um, our final question, um, we've already gone past our half an hour. Uh, but And this is, um, I think it's very important. Is there any final advice for our viewers? And, actu and actually, um, there is also a question from the fresh graduates too. Do we have any advice for fresh graduates. So maybe we'll take this as the final question from everyone tonight. Um, Mr. Halim, would you like to start first? Okay, um, I'll cover the question by the fresh graduate. I think um, it comes back to my opening statement, uh, you know, that this is the real world. This is real. Uh, situations like this can happen. Um, we don't know what else will come in the, in the future, what sort of pandemic, what sort of virus, what sort of virus that can come in the future. Uh, as many of those who are aspiring to join, you know, any industry, yeah, to graduate and, and get a job, 
I think we need to realize that, you know, um, you got to start somewhere. You got to build up your, your, your exp exposure, your, your, your experience and understand whatever industry that you want to come into to clearly understand that things like this can happen. And when this sort of thing happens, how do I cope with it? All right. So no doubt, as Mr. Akil say, you know, we, we may be in the different league in terms of technology savvy, but it is our duty. But it's our duty to learn it, to be at par with whatever that's happening current. Yeah. So I think um, that's that what I, that's what I could say with regards to, to the fresh graduate. And as a parting message to everybody, I think let's minimize the spread. Um, follow what the government is doing. I mean, we get a lot of messages on our WhatsApp and any other social media. Again, some are real, some are fake, some can work, some cannot work. So at the end of the day, I think we need to use our own judgment and our own uh, common sense to, to just... Uh, contain the spread and reduce the curves, hope life come back as possible. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Akil? Well, uh, whatever comes down will always come up back. Whatever comes mm. down, whatever loss, there's always an opportunity in between. So it's up to each and every one of us to see that opportunity, to seize that opportunity and to use it to the benefit of uh, individuals or a group as a collective thing. You know, so you, you as a fresh graduate uh, do not see this as a oh, la, through, la, I in the wrong course or this thing. No, please. No. You should not surrender before you go to the battle. What you should do is that use this and find the light at the end of the tunnel. Find the opportunity at the end of the uh, working uh, experience. I am sure and I'm, I believe this industry is even though free by, its, by, by the nature, but still people like to travel people wants to travel people needs to travel uh, so therefore the, the 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 request and the interest and the requirement is always there only it's up to you you have to portray you have to do you have to be innovative and you have to use your initiative to ensure that you can excel in the industry do not just be a, 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 a listener, a follower, but be a leader. Not many people can be a leader, but I don't think that it is not uh, possible for you. It is possible. Okay? Go for it. Go for it and go for it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Akil. Mr. Para, any words of wisdom? Yeah, I, I think... Um, every generation, they are opposed with unprecedented challenges in their lifetime, I think. And, and as, as, a, as a fresh graduate at this point in time, you, you might look at it and say that, oh, why in this point in time I'm facing this? You know, but if you, if you have coped and managed to get through this, the rest of the journey would be a lot more easier for you. So use this as an opportunity to learn because learning is a lifelong process, you know. So with, with this challenge is not only, you know, it's just for you or us or it's, it's going through every single human being in the world that's facing the same challenge now. You know, I, I think Malaysia, you know, I think we are coping quite well with a lot of other countries that I, I think we can see our, our, our health frontliners are doing quite a good job and you know we, we, are, we are quite blessed that you know that the death rates are not so 
great like other like like the other countries in europe and all that so with every human being facing the same challenge and we are uniting together to fight the same enemy it's impossible for us to lose this battle i think humanity is one of the greatest strength that we need to now come together and and you know be and save save the world that we we all are living in now and facing so that that that's my my final words for today thank you thank you mr para thank you dato would you like to wrap up okay thank you dd uh, alfred could you please uh, share my slide now uh this is just my one slide just want to share with everyone uh, i think y'all can read life is not always perfect and there is always a possibility for a problem right right now but the problem is not the end but it depends how you see like what mr aq say that uh, and uh, mr para also they mentioned uh, if you break your pencil into two the other one i think is also another piece of pencil you can sharpen it and then now you got two pencils so in life nothing is impossible is an always turn impossible become possible uh, this is the different yeah you can excuse the slide uh, effort i think uh, just would like to share a little bit um, in my past uh, career i never come across so tough so different crisis in my previous experience in my exhibitions i gone through like birthday uh, i gone through like uh, election day we gone through like a lot of demonstration even though one of my show home day was just after stars i think we gone through all these kind of things but never come across of this covid-19 so much different but i think we have to because like what you say i think we have to think out of the box we always make possible make impossible possible so i think let's work together and see how to overcome this uh do stay calm stay at home stay cool be patient because this covid-19 it just periods of time whether is 3 months 6 months or 1 year time will come back to the normal life prepare ourselves for the next new beginning and when the economy bounces back uh first thing is to sustain the company and be prepared for the next economy to bounce back and i wish uh, all of you good health and stay safe i think that is the take up point uh, because at this moment sometime don't force yourself if this is not the real time for you to go in chinese say uh, cantonese is say like what tin si tai le yan wo i think it means you don't have the uh, maybe dd you know how to explain uh It is not the time for you to invest. It's not the time for you to do. You don't have the luck. You don't have the timing, and this is not the good time. Maybe you might want to pause for a while, and wait, and go back, and then you start again a uh, new beginning, a new journey. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dato. Thank you, Didi. Thank you, and with that, I would like to thank our four experts and a big thank you to all our viewers for spending your precious evening with us. We hope this webinar has given you new ideas to work with. To survive this period in history, we need to change our mindset. As entrepreneurs and people with entrepreneurial mindset, we will find solutions and visions to adapt to any new future. Please look out for future webinars by Masios. If you have any ideas or topics you would like our next webinar to cover, do share it with us on our WhatsApp number within the next hour. As an industry, let's stay united. support our ministry of health in their efforts and change our own mindset with that stay home stay safe and stay healthy thank you and good night thank you thank you bye thank you halim thank you akil and para didi good job take care thank you. bye thank you. thank you very much bye right. thank you in house didi thank you mr akil thank you